All right, hey there, everybody. It's Dave Souza with Fry and Bake Studios, and um, I've seen a lot of questions about uh, jump games, runners, platforms here recently on the forums. And since, excuse me, <clears throat> since I'm working on one, I thought it might be a good idea to uh, go over just some of the basics of um, how to make your character jump and and all that. I know there's the template on the uh, game salad site and I know some people are having some issues with it I originally used this as a starting point as well that template that same template and um, it just didn't quite fit what I was trying to do so I I did end up modifying it but it was it was good a good starting point just to so I wouldn't have to redo everything um, initially so let's just look at a couple things real quick um, here's this is my actor here that's gonna jump so just let me <coughs> click on him here and explain some stuff about collision area um, just because it's an issue that comes up in, in, in these games. Um, as you can see in this white uh, border around here when the boxes where the boxes are, this is your this is your actual collision area here. And you're gonna see with my character um, when I cut it out of Photoshop, you'll see that I've that I've cut my collision area is very very close so that there's no empty pixels uh, around there so you, you want to make sure that you know if you've got a, like a big huge box out here and even though there's dead space like in here that <clears throat> all this area is going to be detectable this whole square now you can you can change to a circle uh, in here which actually I did but <clears throat> remember what a circle does is it really doesn't give you quite a circle on your actor uh, it gives you more of of just rounded corners um, here is what it does it kind of smooths the edges so by putting a circle like right here it was able to give me a little bit more of a, a rounded edge here so uh, my actor could plane over the objects and it wouldn't be like a direct triangle um, so <clears throat> that's one of the things you need to watch out for when you when you're making your, uh, your your actor for your jump game and then same with your objects too as well and the other thing while <coughs> excuse me while we're uh, we're in here as you can see I've got an I've got an invisible uh, actor in here and uh, this actor is uh, labeled grounded um, this is what's going to tell my actor that it's um, it's touching the ground and you'll see that as a collide behavior inside there it says collide with actor of type uh, behavior and uh, I don't want him to I don't want him to bounce when he when he hits that ground, I want it to be a solid uh, fall. So <clears throat> this restitution right here in your actors, excuse me, <clears throat> is what controls um, how much bounce is in there. So you want to set that to zero. Okay. So we've got our we've got our actor in our scene. We've got the ground in place, and and make sure that's checked, not movable. Now, one of the things is um, I see a lot of people talk about gravity. <coughs> Excuse me. Most um, most advanced game salad uh, developers do not use uh, the global uh, gravity settings um, when they're doing a game like this. Because what happens is that, like I these clouds in here move and there's actually um, shopping carts that come this way and the, you've got to jump over them. So I've got all these different elements that move around in my scene and then uh, in more of a traditional platform you know you're gonna have platforms that move up and down or some that move left and right and so what happens is if you have gl uh, gl the global gravity setting on you've got to make sure you know all these objects ha are not movable you have gotta make sure that you're gonna have to constrain whatever you know if you want these to move on the X then you've got to constrain the Y attribute and all these things and then you've got to go around and anything that's movable you got to kind of constrain its areas and it just becomes a big you know it just becomes a big nightmare to track all that kind of stuff so for this in this I'm gonna show you we're not going to use any any of the scene gravity at all so that's gonna make sure that's all set to zero okay um, and so what we do is basically all gravity is right is a force that pulls us down to the ground so I've got my ground here so what I need is a constant force uh, that's going to be pulling my actor all the time to the ground so let's go let's go inside this actor for a minute and you're gonna see I've got a little category here called gravity and um, 
actually I changed out what that is but that's basically an uh, accelerate okay behavior you can actually you can actually change if you didn't know that you can actually change these headers double click in them and you can type something in there and you hit return and you can actually change the name which which I like to do that way I can when I've got this many rules and this many attributes you know it helps me keep track of everything so I know exactly what I can go to so you're gonna see a lot of my stuff has changed um, so this is my gravity it's an accelerate behavior okay it's not encapsulated in any rules and it's giving me an acceleration of, of 2000 relative to the scene uh, at uh, 270 degrees so it's giving me a constant all the time it's giving me a constant downforce of this of this 2000 so it, it's keeping my actor uh, grounded that's the force that's what I'm using to replace global gravity so you can go in and anything you want to have gravity applied to uh, you just go in and take this and do this you can even copy this okay go over to custom you can even take this and just drag it over into your custom and there you go boom you've got your gravity and you just drag that out into whatever other actors that you want that need that same gravity you just drag it in there boom and you're done you've got your gravity and it's all individual to only <clears throat> only those actors that you need gravity applied to and now you don't have to worry about fixing all X and Y's and constraining all those areas um, in all the other actors in your scene and you can just focus on the ones that need gravity so you're gonna see over here there's some basic basic boolean attributes okay and they're <clears throat> they come checked as your actor should be uh, touching the ground to start with so they're um, they're, they're all checked to start with okay so you've got jump and when this is checked um, this is this indicates a um, a false uh, uh, behavior okay so they, they start out all checked so we're gonna have uh, three booleans and we're gonna have self grounded we're gonna have facing right and we're gonna have jump okay all booleans you're gonna <coughs> make them and how you make them is you go back into your prototype actor over here and you make them by just pushing an attribute right here making it and labeling it and put it in there it's called a self attribute it's relative to the actor um, themselves it's not a game level attribute <clears throat> so you're going to have your basic uh, move left okay so I've got this in this version here I've got it um, this is a back version when I was doing my initial testing that I got everything set up now I have it on touch controls on the screen so I've got <clears throat> an actor and this can be whatever event you want touches press whatever I may I may do show the other video do another video of how I made my touch controls um, that I made so you've got right now I'm just using the keyboard for testing on this one <clears throat> so the actor receives the event key left key left is down and when key left is down my my actor is going to move at a speed of 300 relative to the scene, not to the actor, because I'm moving left and right in the scene. And uh, the direction is left, 180 degrees. And when, and when my actor, okay, is moving left, I need to change my attribute self-facing, okay, this self-face right, okay, to false, so that, so that um, it knows the game knows that. You know my actors <coughs> which way my actor is facing so that I can change the image and you're gonna see the same thing keyboard left is up okay now <coughs> what this rule here does is this stops my <coughs> I know some people say oh my my actor keeps moving you know after I after I push the key down and then I let up on it you know my actor he, he just keeps moving so what I've got is I've got another rule in here that says when the key is up go to zero zero direction zero speed and, you know you want to you know you want to have it in the opposite direction of the way that your actor was going okay and you want to set the speed to zero same way relative to scene so that when you let the key up he stops he doesn't keep moving and you're going to see these same kind of rules here okay same thing when touches when keyboard 
uh, right arrow key is down cell facing is going to become true and the speed's going to be 300 and he's going to move in that direction relative to scene it's going to move to the right and you're going to see the same thing here I've got it set in the opposite direction 180 speed set to zero when the right key is up and the scene so now when when both keys are up it's going to be zero when one the left key is up it's going to be zero moving in that direction um, and it moved at the speed of the right and you'll see where these <coughs> you'll see where this right facing rule uh, comes in comes into play here um, so when he faces right you know you got your linear velocity is at zero because he's standing at this point my attribute self grounded is true and self facing right is true so they know that you know that your actors facing right okay this is my animation for running right so you see you know your linear velocity now is greater than one that means he's moving in a direction self facing is right is is true he knows he's going the, to right and self grounded is true because he has to be touching the ground in order to run he doesn't run up in the air same thing for left okay all all that different everything reversed so now let's get into the jump rules here <clears throat> So now what I've got here is you're going to just begin to reverse things around. And this is going to just, this is going to show you which way to have your actor facing. So the main thing is if we, he's jumping, then we know that he's not going to be touching the ground. So self-grounded is going to be false. Okay. And he's facing the right direction. So self-face right. Okay. is going to be true. And then I'm going to be using my C key to make him jump. So when I press the C key, it's going to look and say, Okay, when I press the C key, you'll see he's going to move up in the air. Once he's left in the contact with the ground, okay, it's going to switch the faults. It knows it's right, and it's going to change the image. Once he leaves contact, he's not overlapping or colliding with the ground anymore. It's going to change it to a jump, and it knows which, which direction it is. Okay, so same thing with these run rules and all that. So, so now, <coughs> here's my basic jump. Uh, power here so how I do my jump is when the C key is pressed and the actor is grounded okay so you know he's he's touching the ground and when I press C and when he's touching the ground he's gonna he's gonna uh, self grounded it's gonna change to false okay and for 0.4 seconds okay he's gonna move up at a speed of 500 relative to the scene and what this what this allows me to do is this this allows me to by putting it in a timer what it does is it limits the the player from just holding the C key down forever and him just you know keep accelerating uh, up so this puts a limit on and you can adjust this this just happened to whatever works for my scene and my gravity and all that and you can play with the speed and for how long you want him to you know to this this po the power upward to go so i've got it for 0.4 seconds i've got it at a speed of 500 he he, he goes up and he, he continues to move in that in in the up direction for uh 500 <clears throat> and then when you come down here after 0.6 seconds okay it auto it auto forces him to the ground so it doesn't matter if you can you can still have the c key uh, down once you first push the C key down it's gonna it's gonna auto time um, that he's gonna jump up and uh, he's gonna come down after this so you can you'll hold it up uh, 0.4 seconds he's gonna be in the air and that's the longest he can be in the air is point was gonna it'd be around so 0.5 seconds because he's not gonna start really coming the other way so after 0.4 this speed gets shut off uh, at 0.6 it comes down and now he'll come back down to the ground now one of the things is that if you uphold the C key okay if you let it up he'll still start to come down but after point six it's gonna it's gonna force you uh, back down to the ground okay and that's basically how I do my how how I do my jump stuff and this is the same way with uh, jumping left okay it's the same it's the reverse rules of of what you have for jumping right okay 
So when self-grounded is false and all of that. So, and I'm not sure whether I have this right or not about what it is when these are checked. I might, I might have to check on that for you. So here's my actor and I'll just give you a little a little preview of how it works and you can see when I move forward back that way faces the right directions and when I push C I'm holding the key down see it forces him back down you know he'll keep like hopping but he'll come down and if I let the key go he comes back down right away all right and that's basically you know it's pretty simple to make a uh, to make a jump to make a jump command uh, to make your actor jump it's just all about accelerating and how long you want them to be up in the air and the events that you're triggering and and um, and uh, <coughs> excuse me and, and how you're doing so let's just take a peek real quick because I forget this stuff sometimes let's let's do a little I'll show you how to do some uh, game debugging and we'll look and see what the uh, what the rules start out with when they're checked I can't remember whether they're true or false so let's just drag an actor on here and what we're gonna do is oh uh, well actually we can do it this way let's go into our actor since they're self attributes we're gonna have to go into them and let's just uh, come over to our behaviors standard behaviors and let's grab a uh, let's grab a display text and we'll just drag that in there and we'll come over here and we'll just make sure we put a color on there and we're just gonna come over here <coughs> we're gonna go self this is that's what my character is called Baker self and we're gonna scroll down to the attributes here and we'll just look at the jump one okay and this is gonna tell us jump when it's checked okay because um, we're not jumping so it'll tell us what the condition is uh, normally so let's look at it and it's true okay so if you check it all right that means it's true if it's off it's false so checked is true and off is false okay so I was just having a little brain fart there and I forgot please forgive me anyway so I got to show you how to <coughs> how you can debug stuff I like to when I'm doing stuff like that I'll, I'll just put it especially with self attributes I'll just put it right on my actor so I can see it so anyways <coughs> I hope some of this uh, just seeing how uh, a jump jump game goes together helps you and I've actually uh, did a uh, I did a some touch controls and let me see if I can uh, there we go just show you I had built some touch controls and this is how I was testing everything out because they they interlock how I built it <coughs> is uh, and I may put <coughs> I may put this just put the template online and you can mess with it instead of doing a video because I've got it all set up in here uh, just as an individual when I was building it so basically what this does is I won't be able to show you all of it because it's touch and I can I can only touch one thing at a time so basically when you do this it it's gonna move right uh, when you do this it's gonna move left and one actually when these turn to one they actually that's when it triggers whether you're running left and right and this and these um, these uh, true false these booleans in here what they do is they lock out the first one you're touching down so that when you well how I've got it set up is so let's say you're running to the right when you touch when you touch the button on the left when you touch this area on the left and you already have the uh, right touchdown he'll jump <coughs> so I basically made it so you just using two buttons uh, same thing if you're running to the left it recognizes which one was already touched first and then when you touch the other side he'll jump in that left direction and the same thing on the right direction so um, that's how I built that all up and uh, Maybe I'll, I'll post that as well. All right, so hope this helps. Thanks.